Hi guys and welcome back to Is It Worth It Reviews. I'm Srbo Stojanović and today we are talking about Ever Solo DMP A8. This is the best uh, digital streamer and a deck that Ever Solo have ever produced. And also it's a preamp and its cost is 1980 US dollars or euros. So as you can see, this one is a noticeably pricier than the previous A6 model. And I just thought it's interesting to mention this. I saw on the web when A8 was announced that some people, some buyers of A6 uh, got quite annoyed. They were like, they cannot release streamers uh, so quickly and improve on them so quickly. But I was a bit confused about that because this is not A6 II, it's not A6 MK2 or something like that. This is A8. It's more than twice the price. You can clearly see it's bigger and it's meant to be in another price point, on another level, like uh, basically all hi-fi manufacturers or car manufacturers are doing. You have different tiers of a product that are clearly differentiated by, by price and who are they aiming at. Different wants and needs, different depths of pockets too, uh, so uh, this is, in my opinion, like uh, buying a luxury car. For example, let's say Mercedes. There is a smaller one, C-Class. It's still a limousine. It's a really nice and luxury one. But uh, then you have something like S-Class and it's even bigger. It's more premium. It's considerably pricier. And they are in the same lineup. When uh, one is released, the other one is released. Like three, four, five different tiers of a car. And then you choose how big, performant and powerful one you need. And uh, uh, the C and S class are not a competition to each other. They just serve different segments of market. And uh, in my opinion, at least, it's the same with A6 and A8. A8 has bigger number and higher price, and it's clearly meant as a higher tier product. But what does that mean specifically? Well, as you can see, A8 is noticeably bigger. Uh, actually, it's noticeably wider than A6. And uh, as I said, it's more than twice the price. And let's start with the things that are the same. So we still have a color touchscreen in the front. There is a volume knob, there is plethora of digital inputs, digital outputs, analog inputs, analog outputs on the back. And this one can be used in a many different ways, only as a digital platform, uh, as a digital platform and the DAC, also as a preamp. And I will not mention every possible way that you can connect to it and that you can send the signal from it, because that would take like 10 minutes at least. I'll just put the image on the screen. You can look at what uh, sort of inputs and outputs you have. You can look at the official web page and see the, the, the spec sheet. That's easy. I'll uh, dedicate most of my time here in this video about how it performs actually. Uh, just before I do that, I wanted to say that we still have a pretty great uh, operating system on this device that's based on an Android uh, operating system, but it's deeply customized by Eversolo to serve their streaming purposes. Uh, one new thing though is that this time around you get a remote. Uh, in, uh, with A6 I think it was an extra that you had to purchase separately. With A8, it's included and it's small, it's made out of plastic, but it feels like decent uh, quality and it reacts nicely. As you can see, I do not even have to uh, point toward the device. And uh, one next thing that you can also hear while I'm doing this is relay clicking. That's the analog volume atten attenuation inside of this unit, which means it has a real preamp that uses 
analog electronics to attenuate the signal. It's not just a digital attenuation. And uh, that is one thing that has been upgraded compared to A6. Another one is that this time around we have a different power supply that is a dual hybrid power supply, meaning that uh, there is two of them. One is a switching mode power supply, which powers the digital part of the device, if I understand correctly. The other one is a linear power supply that powers the analog part of this device. And uh, Eversolo says that's the best combination that you can get. So basically two separate power supplies powering separate parts of the device. Aside from that, uh, in the digital section, uh, among other things, uh, there are new and uh, better clocks. Those are femto clocks, they are more precise and also more expensive than the ones in the A6 model. And in the DAC section, uh, they used AKM chip this time instead of Sabre, and also it's a flagship AKM chip. I'll put that on the screen, but as you can see, everything is upgraded and improved and uh, more complex, like in case of power supply or just higher tier, like in the case of clocks and a DAC chip and how the preamp uh, is done. Now I'll quickly go through the software and the controlling app. Just like in case of A6, the software offers a very feature-rich experience. Many apps and connect protocols are supported. So, for example, you can use Kobaz, Tidal, Spotify, and you can connect to this device using UPnP protocol or Tidal Connect, Spotify Connect, AirPlay supported uh, too, I think, and uh, Rune will be supported uh, at the moment. The certification process is still uh, ongoing, but it will support it just like it was with A6 eventually when, when the process is done. And you can do all of that from the unit itself. Uh, you can use a remote control. You can use a control app from your phone that looks, looks really nice and enables you to basically control everything on the device, all settings, inputs, outputs, and it's a very convenient way. Uh, user interface is nice, it's smooth. Browsing through streaming services like Tidal and Kobaz are also nice. And the only complaint I still have when I am playing music directly from the Eversolo app on my phone is that uh, playlist queue, once you queue something to play it, is a little bit fundamental. But aside from that, everything else feels uh, really nicely done and well thought out. Uh, one thing that's new that uh, I don't remember being on A6 is DSP. So if you're using analog outs, you can enable uh, DSP and there is uh, plenty of things to do. There are profiles to be saved. Uh, there is a parametric e equalizer. And the only thing that I noticed is that uh, PEQ is limited to preset points, preset frequencies. You can adjust anything like in any other parametric EQ uh, on those uh, frequency spots, but those are pre-chosen for you. And of course, it would be better if you can choose these for yourself, but even in this form, I think it's a very powerful tool. I played with it a little bit. It's very convenient. It does influence the overall sound a bit negatively. So personally, I uh, don't like to use it, but it's there. I know that many people like DSP. And if you have some particular issues, balance issues in your system, some highs or bass that's going wild, the, the positives of taming those particular problems would be greater than a slight uh, negative influence that just enabling DSP without even touching anything in particular will have on your like absolute fidelity level. And that leads me to the next part of what is the Eversolo DMP A8's fidelity level? How does it sound?
Okay, so I started testing A8 uh, as a digital platform using its digital outputs only, so no internal DAC uh, is, uh, was used in that case. And I noticed that A8 is simply a fantastic streamer. It's a fantastic digital platform, just like A6 was, but even better. Now, if you remember the A6 review and me telling that it sounded very clean, it had great layering, really great pinpointing, uh, it had good neutral and natural tonal balance, and it just sounded really, really good. And all of that is present on A8 and even improved further. This one uh, sounds even tonally richer. It sounds fuller and there's greater palpability to tones. Also, its sound stage is simply more spacious and uh, it's slightly deeper but it's noticeably wider. And because of that, every tone, every instrument and singer is separated even better and layered even better. And uh, when you compare them directly, A8 simply sounds bigger, more spacious and more decluttered than A6. And there's also that uh, tonal richness, uh, tone timbre, that definitely feels fuller and richer with A8. So for example, if you're listening to any natural wind instrument, let's say a saxophone, the, the sensation of that blowing sound, that windy sound that has details and textures, but also sounds very full and plush, you know, that sound, that will sound more realistic and more present and palpable with A8 and it will fall a little bit flat and simplistic with A6. And notice, A6 is no slouch in that regard. It's a really, really great streamer. But A8 is better and you can notice that. And a very similar comparison was with Volumio Revo. And uh, if you, again, f watched that review, maybe I said that Volumio Revo is slightly better than A6. If you add a linear power supply, that gap increases slightly, it does sound slightly fuller and richer and more spacious than A6. But that is still closer to A6 than it is to A8. A8's sound stage and that sensation of energetic, full, palpable tones is greater than in Volumio Revo. And from that dual, it also emerges like a easily better digital streamer. And uh, to be perfectly honest here, it's the best digital platform that I've personally tested on this channel. So I have no other expensive, fancy streamers that I could compare with A8 and tell you on which level it performs. From these that I mentioned, that I considered to be really and truly great digital streamers, a8 is the best one. Now, if you add uh, an upgrade that's a third party made linear power supply to A6, it does improve A6's performance. Now, the, the fullness and that tone timbre, that tone richness uh, lifts significantly and it's almost basically equaling what you are hearing with A8. That is, if we talk about that tone fullness and, and just tone richness and timbre, uh, upgraded A6 with linear power supply matches in that aspect A8, but it still cannot match it in terms of the sound stage with depth, so the overall spaciousness and uh, separation and layering. That's still better on A8. It just sounds bigger. Now moving to the DAC section, and uh, AKM chip in this one sounds really smooth, fluid, and natural. And uh, it resolves great deal of information, and that especially goes for just tone richness, tone texture, everything sounds full and rich. 
uh, just as I explained for digital outs, uh, for those, for example, wind instruments that have both great fullness and inner tone texture, that sounds great on the integrated deck too. And it's never emphasizing the edges. The Eversolo DMPA8 deck is uh, highly revealing, but it has that softness and smoothness that you expect from great AKM implementations. It doesn't focus on edges and sharpness. And uh, that is a big difference, one big difference between A6 and A8. So A6, uh, if you once again remember my review, sounded very clean and crisp and it was really clean on the edges. It sounded energetic, it layered well, it had great focus and just overall clarity and cleanliness, but uh, uh, it never sounded particularly rich. I would never say that the A6 deck section had a rich tone timbre or just a beautiful mid-range or something like that. It was a typical, highly engaging, highly focused and well-etched Saber sound. And A8 with its flagship AKM and however Solo implemented it, uh, went a slightly different route. First of all, it sounds bigger and wider. Sound stage is deeper, wider, more spacious compared to A6 that is more in between speakers, more congested. Second of all, A8 does not focus on edges that much. It has softer, calmer sound, but uh, when you carefully listen, it actually reveals more details. So small, tiny things happening, small movements, uh, for example, on the stage or somebody making position in the chair or singer touching the microphone, those really, really tiny details are better heard through A8. So is the inner tone texture. But it's just always presented in a smoother and softer way and, as I said, in a bigger sound stage. And even if you upgrade A6 with the linear power supply, it catches up uh, with that tone timbre and fullness with A8. The edges uh, are milder with the linear power supply on A6, and it just sounds richer and calmer and more natural, and that's true. But once again, like with the digital outs, uh, it cannot catch up in terms of uh, soundstage size and spaciousness and how well everything is layered and separated. A6, even with linear power supply, stays more in between the speakers and more converging towards that central part of the soundstage, not as wide as A8. And to know how good the DAC in the A8 actually is, I used Gustard R26, which is one of my favorite decks ever, and I really like this one. Now, this is uh, basically much more of a deck. It does have Ethernet port on the back, but it's only a renderer. It's not a fully fledged streamer. It doesn't have its own operating system and controlling gap or anything. You have to connect to its internal renderer by using some third-party protocol, that is Rune or UPnP, and third-party software uh, that will have its own user interface, its own support of uh, streaming services, uh, storages, etc. That said, as a deck, R26 is to my ears still a better performer. It sounds bolder, more engaging, more dynamic, tones are more palpable and gutsy, and the sound stage is even bigger and more three-dimensional than it is on A8, even though A8 has great uh, spaciousness on its own, R26 is a champion with that and it still wins, in my opinion. And the difference is not huge, but it is noticeable. And uh, uh, there is no doubt I would, just based on a sonic performance, choose R26. 
That is, if you are satisfied with its feature set and connectivity options, which is nowhere near as rich as what Eversolo DMP A8 is offering you. But that leaves us with a question. If it's better than A6 noticeably, but not as good really as R26, where the performance of the internal DAC of A8 lies? Well, it's roughly on the same line with something like SMSL SU10 or Musician Pegasus, for example. Now, I do not have Musician Pegasus with me anymore, but I do have SMSL SU10, Chord Mojo 2 also. Both of these are really smooth, really rich sounding decks, and SU10 especially has big, quite big sound stage. And A8 is somewhere on that level, maybe even slightly deeper when it comes to sound staging than SU10. I really do think that it would match Musician Pegasus. And those really tiny differences aside that I'm hunting for, that means that the internal deck in A8 is on a level with the best of standalone decks around 1000 US dollars. And that's the performance that you're getting, and that's really great. That's noticeable improvement to the one located in the A6. Which leaves us with the last part of A8, and that's using it as a preamp, and listening to these sweet relay clicks. I actually like them. I don't know why, but th this is like music to my ears. Well, I can say that it performs okay. As a preamp, it has, once again, smooth sound, quite a bit warm, and highs are not that extended. It's a little bit darker, sweeter kind of tonality, and it's quite warm, quite bass heavy, and smooth sounding. It's, uh, you could say that it just flows nicely, it's very musical. If you use it as a preamp, if you control the volume here, it will sound fine. It will never be harsh or annoying or anything like that. But it's just not, this preamp section is just not on the same level as the digital platform and the deck section. Those can reveal more, they can spread the soundstage more, and uh, the preamp part is toning them down and limiting them, and it's just leaving quite a bit of performance unused, undiscovered. So just to put that into perspective, I connected the MPA-8 to a 950 preamp Leatherbach. This is a really good preamp at 950. For some reason it was launched without a remote, but the remote receiver was always in there and uh, later they added a remote that I ordered and it's now on my way. I'll, I'll make a update video for this one because it de deserves it. It's a pretty good preamp for 950 and when you connect DMP to this one and you do not attenuate the volume on A8 but instead you use this Bach preamp, you realize that there is noticeably more detail retrieval tone texture, the sound stage is suddenly wider, airier, bigger, and that's what I was describing for the DAC and for the digital platform of A8, but the preamp section inside cannot follow that level of quality and detail retrieval that those sections before it can achieve. So, in my opinion, if you are buying such fine device, such fine digital streamer and a DAC as A8, you should unleash its power but use by using a separate preamp. Something like uh, Leather Bach or maybe Sheet Freya Plus or Acoustic Invader that I was using for many years. I'm not at the moment because I just have uh, even pricier Acoustic Invader preamp because I simply love them. Uh, by the way, I'll review it sometime soon too. So uh, these are the level of preamps that will do A8 
justice. And this leads me to the conclusion. Uh, DMP A8 is a fantastic digital streamer. It has all of the good sides of A6, but it's improved. It has even more deliberate and complex power supply and all parts are selected to be better. And you can hear that in its sound over both digital and analog outputs. The only part that I would bypass in this device it's, is preamp. It's okay, uh, I cannot say anything particularly bad about it, but it's on the level of like a decent 3, 4, 500 headphone amp when it's used as a preamp. It cannot match uh, a great preamp of let's say 1000 US dollars or something like that. But as a streamer and a DAC, it is a fantastic, really high performing product that's noticeably better than A6. And if you ask me, is it worth it? I wanted to mention this shortly. Uh, I uh, saw, I think that was the first, maybe not the first, one of the first reviews of A8 on the web. My colleague from the US was reviewing it and he said, this is a true audiophile product at a non-audiophile price. And for that, I have to say this. I agree, it's a true audiophile product. It's a really highly performant audiophile product, but it comes at an audiophile price to match it. It justifies its price. It has premium stuff built in. You can hear that. But man, I kind of envy those people that call 2000 uh, price tag non-audiophile price. For me personally and how I see it and, and my budget limits, this is a highly performant product at an appropriately high price. It's, uh, as I said in the beginning of this video, it's another segment of the market compared to A6. It's more than uh, twice the price. It's not more than twice better sounding, nothing ever is. It's an uphill battle as always, but in an equally high quality hi-fi setup, if the rest of your system is a match for A8, you will be able to notice why it is priced uh, the way it's priced. And that would be all for me today. I hope you liked this video and see you next time. Bye.